Hello everyone. Welcome to edupediaworld.com and thanks for watching Edupedia World videos. This is Vikas Patil. This is the 8th chapter of grade 9, Volcanism. In this chapter, we are going to explore in detail about the powerful volcanoes and volcanic activities. Everybody has heard of volcanoes. The angry earth spewing up its anger, the sudden explosion of a distant mountain top, and lava that slithers ominously towards villages. Volcanoes are fantastic display of the power of the earth. But what actually is a volcano? How and where are they formed? Why do some places have a history of volcanic activity? Volcanoes explain a key piece of the earth's geologic puzzle. In this chapter, we are going to unravel the mysteries of volcanoes. This chapter has been divided into three topics. Topic 1 is Volcanism and Volcanic Eruptions. Topic 2 Types of Volcanoes. Topic 3 Volcanic Features and Landforms. This is the first session of the chapter. In this session, we are going to learn details about volcanism and volcanic eruptions. In this session, we are going to try and achieve the following objectives. Apply the knowledge of the plate tectonic theory to understand volcanism. Cite the locations at which Volcanoes are found along with exceptions. List examples of volcanoes found at each location. Explain hotspots. Describe and compare different types of volcanic eruptions. Distinguish between magma and lava. And finally, compare different types of magma. Before we begin our exploration about volcanism, let us look at some of the common misconceptions that exist regarding the same. First, volcanic eruptions are God's way to show His anger. Second, all volcanic eruptions bring out similar magma. Third, there is no difference between magma and lava. Well, all these are myths. Let us explore the facts. To begin with, let us look at some of the important terms which are connected to volcanism. First, Volcanism Volcanism is the process in which magma is formed and moves towards the surface of the earth. So the process by which magma is produced and erupts on the earth's surface is known as Volcanism. Magma any melted rock that occurs deep in the crust or which is within the crust is known as magma. When molten rock escapes from beneath the earth's surface, it changes from magma to lava. Vent is the opening through which molten rock flows, most commonly known as volcanoes. Fissure. Fissure is a long crack in the earth's crust through which lava flows. What is a volcano? 
A volcano is simply a mountain that forms when molten rock erupts or flows as lava from an opening in earth's surface. The next question is how do volcanoes form? A volcano forms when molten rock erupts or flows as lava from an opening in the earth's surface and builds up a volcanic cone. As stated earlier, such openings are called vents. Volcanoes when erupt release mo molten rock, ash and poisonous gases. All these products result from melting in the mantle or the crust. It would be easier to understand volcanism if we examine the locations where volcanoes are found on the earth's surface. If you observe the map, the red dots represent volcanoes. Volcanoes can mainly be found at three locations on the earth. The three main locations where volcanoes can be found are convergent plate boundaries, divergent plate boundaries, and far away from the plate boundaries on hotspots. Divergent boundaries Volcanic activity at the divergent boundaries like the mid-oceanic ridges is pronounced because the oceanic crust is thinner. So the magma from the earth's interior can easily erupt to the surface. Such volcanoes are usually active but quiet. The lava erupting out of these volcanoes is basaltic in nature because the composition of magma is different in different volcanoes the properties of the lava are also different. In effusive eruptions lava flows are relatively calm and do not explode out of the volcano. As a result, people generally have a great deal of warning before lava reaches them. So non-explosive eruptions are much less deadly. That does not keep them from being destructive, however. Even when we know that a lava flow is approaching there are very few ways of stopping it given the huge quantity and temperature of lava. Some examples are the Krafla, Loki, Hekla and Katla volcanoes on Iceland. Convergent boundaries Unlike divergent boundaries, at convergent boundaries, friction combined with the energy of the earth's interior melts some of the rock in the descending plate forming magma. The magma, hotter and lighter than the surrounding rock, erupts as volcanoes. Most volcanoes found at these locations are violent and erupt without warning. The lava erupting out of these volcanoes is granitic in nature. Imagine the devastation and force caused by the atom bomb dropped by US on Nagasaki at the end of World War II in which over 40,000 people died. Now imagine an explosion 10,000 times as powerful as the atomic bomb. Explosive volcanic eruptions can be that powerful. As hot magma beneath the surface interacts with water, gases accumulate and the magma pressure builds up. The pressure grows and grows until these dissolved gases cause it to burst in an enormous explosion. Volcanoes are likely to be found at convergent boundaries where the overriding plate is thinner oceanic plate. Example 
of such volcanoes are Mount Fuji in Japan, Krakatoa in Indonesia, and St. Helens in Washington, USA. If both the plates are continental, like the Himalayas, magma is likely to remain buried deep in the crust and does not erupt. So volcanic activity tends to occur along subduction plate boundary where one plate slides underneath another. The edge of the Pacific plate makes up a long subduction boundary. There are a huge number of earthquakes along these boundaries because these are regions where the plates are colliding. For the same reason, the majority of the volcanic activity on the earth also occurs along these convergent boundaries. This is called the Pacific Ring of Fire, where over 75% of the world's volcanoes are found. Surprisingly, most volcanic place on the earth is nowhere near plate boundaries. Although most volcanic activity on earth occurs at plate boundaries, there are some volcanically active spots that are in the middle of a tectonic plate known as the hotspots. The islands of Hawaii formed over a hotspot and are not located on the Pacific Ring of Fire. A hotspot is an area of great heat in the mantle. Such unusual conditions of heat are thought to have been created due to concentration of radioactive elements. The Hawaii Islands are the exposed peaks of a great chain of volcanoes that were formed over millions of years. The islands are thought to lie directly above a column of hot rock called a mantle plume. Mantle plumes are more or less fixed in place and continuously bring magma up from the mantle towards the crust. As tectonic plates move above them, they leave a trail of volcanic activity, which forms island chains like Hawaii. Scientists believe there are about 50 hotspots on the earth. If you observe this diagram, the largest island at present is the youngest island of Hawaii. As we move towards the northwest, we find a chain of islands getting smaller in size. The oldest islands are the ones which are present at the extreme end towards the northwest. But the present largest island is not going to remain the largest forever. There is another island which is forming to the south east of the present Hawaiian island called Loihi. Its top is about 3000 feet below the water surface at present. It is expected to reach the surface in the next 10,000 to 1 lakh years. This island is going to eventually replace the big Hawaiian island. Scientists believe there are about 50 hotspots on the earth. Other hotspots include Yellowstone and the Galapagos Islands, magma and lava. Deep beneath the earth, magma forms as the first stage in creating a volcano. This occurs because rock below the surface is subjected to great amount of pressure from gravity. The decay of radioactive material generates additional heat. The substantial heat and pressure melt the rock below the surface to form a taffy-like substance. Melted rock or magma can be found in magma chambers beneath the earth. Since the magma chambers are far beneath the earth's surface, it is difficult for scientists to study them. Scientists know that magma chambers are created where the heat and pressure 
are greatest. When tectonic plates collide and rub against each other, magma is formed there. That is how the Pacific Ring of Fire was created. We also know there are volcanoes far away from plate boundaries. So we know there are magma chambers in these areas as well. Magma chambers can be found where there are mantle plume or hot spots. Magma chambers can be of different shapes and sizes. They can be in the form of a vertical wall known as dikes or a horizontal layer known as sill or an irregular shape which are known as batholiths. When magma cools and solidifies within the earth's crust, they form intrusive igneous rocks. Once magma reaches the surface, it becomes lava. A highly viscous lava is one that doesn't tend to flow easily. It tends to stay in place. Lavas with high silica contents tend to be more viscous since it is so resistant to moving. It clogs the vents in a volcano. The pressure becomes greater and greater until the volcano finally explodes. This type of lava is found in explosive eruptions. It also tends to trap a lot of gas. When the gas is released, it makes the eruption more explosive. Most of this lava is shot up into the air where it hardens and becomes solid rock. This molten rock that solidifies in the air is known as pyroclastic material. In an igneous rock like pumice, small holes in the raw solid rock show where gas bubbles were present when the rock was still liquid lava. Low viscosity lava slides or flows down mountain sides. There is more than one type of low viscosity lava. As stated earlier, the difference between them come from the lavas, lavas different composition and different spots where they come to the surface. The type of igneous formation formed depends on which type of lava it is. This was all for this session. In the next session, we will focus on the types of volcanoes. Don't forget to watch. Thank you.